it's Ryan, it's Shane, it's Flames Nation Radio, and it's hockey time. Uh, yeah, the, baby. Before we dive into that, as always, Flames Nation Radio is delivered to you by the wonderful people at DoorDash. We don't have a sound effect, but if we did, we'd go ding dong. Uh, DoorDash, lovely people, excellent service. Use it because if you're like us and you're going, uh, I, I'm too tired, I'm too busy to cook, but I need to eat or else I'll die. Shane is a, a starving student. But he's not starving because no. of the fine people at DoorDash because Shane's too damn busy this week to, uh, to do yeah. anything but this podcast and trying to pass school. Yeah, midterms. Midterms season, maybe. And then, and what's how is he going to get uh, a respite from his, his studies? Well, aside from Rupert's whiskey from Eau Claire Distillery, the official whiskey of the Calgary Flames, Shane's got some games to watch this week. We've been talking. Yeah. The last meaningful game for the Calgary Flames was the end of May. The Calgary Flames lost in overtime to the Edmonton Oilers in the. <sighs> fifth game of the second round of the playoffs the Flames played 12 games in the playoffs they unfortunately lost seven of them so they didn't play more than that uh and then since then it's been an interesting summer we've spent a lot of time discussing the cha-cha-cha changes the Flames have been going through uh primarily on the ice the off the ice pretty much the exact same hockey pretty much everyone's back i think He's what off ice what off ice everything is the same they didn't I change think, any coaches uh, the ahl out. goalie coach switched out the farm team moved here and i think rebecca johnston joined the flames in a development role that's basically it so the flame it's yeah. the same it's the same old crew off the ice on the ice some new faces uh the flames open up their schedule on it's thursday night 7 30 p.m start on sportsnet one and sportsnet 960 the fan and it'll be the Flames debut as long as there's no, you know, last minute roster decisions that we're not aware of. The Flames debuts of four key players, Jonathan Huberdo, Nazem Kadri, Mackenzie Weger, and Kevin Rooney. That's a fairly significant. That's uh, a top end changeover is massive. Like the top, and, the top end changeover. And you got insane. of the top two lines and top two pairs, you have a key piece on Two, both of the two lines and one of the two pairs that's significant like that's that ain't nothing and i think that's gonna be you know we'll, we'll go through the the three games uh in short order but just i think the storyline to really watch for the flames is okay like daryl sutter's a guy who generally keeps his lines together because he likes to get some mojo going some rhythm going uh unless there's like a guy playing really badly or injuries he tends not to tinker too much unless you know he really wants to uh get some some different energy or to prove a point i'm really curious how long it's going to take these guys to get cooking because it, it's it's not it's necessarily going to be seamless is what is what i'm thinking I, I i especially the top line i i didn't really like how they meshed in preseason like lindholm uh yeah. If you were, wrote to Foley, they were okay. They, were they okay. weren't like they didn't like stick out. There wasn't any like dominating possessive shifts. Um, there was a nice, beautiful rush goal uh, in the game uh, I saw live there. The last one there, Huberto with the spin move, and then oh yeah, we didn't we, we didn't we didn't mention that. So friends, you know how there was two fairly blah preseason games <laughs> against the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, Shane came uh, came up. He was up for Thanksgiving uh, with his better half. And uh, Shane and I met in person, I think, for the first time. First time ever. And what did we do? We went uh, poking around the Flames fanatic, and we actually we ran into friend of the friend of the site, uh, Brent Gibbs, head of retail for the Flames. Uh, really good guy, uh, Gibbsy, always good guy. He uh, he was uh, at that point the the unveiling of Blasty was but a very profound and uh, persistent rumor. He neither conformed nor denied, but told us if something happens, it'll happen next week. And then it happened this week. So, uh, gives he, gives he's good with, uh, holding on to the state secrets. Uh, I had all- to give him compliments in person on the new blasty redesign. The, uh, the Wranglers blasty. Yeah. The, uh, the, uh, the Wranglers folks, if you haven't seen the, the, the recently unveiled jerseys, they're, they're really sharp looking, uh, no black at all. Uh, it's Ooh. nothing but white gold and, and, uh, the, red you know, flames red mm-hmm. it's really sharp it pops really well Neat. and their alternate logo is a, a horse but instead of blasty which is head-on it's sort of turned to the side and i i would assume we'll see that 
as a crest on the third jersey for the farm team in uh, a year or two. Uh, Whenever they get settled, yeah. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it, There's a it'll, lot more leeway do. in the AHL to do new. Oh, you can do all jerseys. kinds of weird stuff in the so, AHL. That's the fun part. Yeah, yeah. With the NHL, though, it's like you have to follow the maker's rules. They, and, yeah, they and, and they changed over retail. They take your third born child. And they, at at yeah. some point, at some point, I know like Mike Gould has a, a feature coming out on the site fairly soon about uh, how they re- revive the, the Wranglers brand for uh, for the, the American Hockey League Club. Uh, there is so much weird stuff that they had to deal with in the background. Uh, copyrights, designs, uh, you know, you have to, you know, supply chain stuff. It's diff- if uh, a lot of these things are, are made in Asia or Europe, depending on what you're getting and uh, depending on what you're getting, it takes a thousand years. And if the idea is you don't want to put, say, hypothetically at your third jersey, you don't want to put your third jersey on sale until you have enough in stock to sell, because that would be logical. If you say you show Shane a jersey and say, hey, we got this sweet new Blasty. And he goes, hot damn, I'd like one. It's kind of dumb if you go, sorry, oh. kid, we don't have them yet. So, Some other day. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like uh, t- it's like your parents announcing your Christmas press, but not letting you open it or play with it. So there, there's a lot of I think league wide, there's a lot of things that they were trying to do earlier this year that they weren't able to for state of the world reasons. So I, I'll give I'll give the, the the retail and marketing people their props because uh, one blasty one or 2.0 and the very slight redesign looks damn sharp the the wranglers the wranglers redesign looks damn sharp Mm -hmm. uh and i'm i'm waiting in anticipation with with uh to see how the reverse retro uh looks i'm expecting we're gonna hear something probably i think by early november i think it depends on when everybody gets stuff in stock it's gotta yeah they gotta not only they gotta get it in stock it's gotta be a full 32 team coordination so yeah it, so because it's a because it's a thing and, so and it's, uh oh we'll warn you guys so the uh the third jersey widely available it'll be available for i think three years because they have to do a three-year commitment yes, so if you, it's not if a, you if you missed out i'm not gonna say you don't have to rush out because you want to look stylish, but uh, it's not like say you know it's not like they have a very limited quantity. They'll be re ups, they'll be restocks. They're going to have they're going to be a, making more. They're going to have a lot. Once the reverse and, retro comes out, that's the one that's going to be limited stock. So if you like it, that's the one to really go and go out and get quickly. And it's fun since so just before we get into the rest because we're on Blasty. Mike Gould pointed out there's going to be Blasty weeks. So if you look at the schedule of when the flames are wearing <laughs> Blasty, it's yeah. actually a whole like like three or four and, like a whole seven day span and and, and, you know, and and you know what home games are included in the two bla- in the twelve Blasty games? Hmm, I wonder, Pike. Are they um, happen to be Battle of Alberta's? I don't think so. They're actually the return of uh, oh the, the, return the returns of, of uh, when Columbus comes to town with Johnny Gaudreau and when Florida mm-hmm. comes to town with uh, with uh, Matthew Kachuk. Mm-hmm. And of course, you, we'd be remiss if we didn't include uh, Erica Branson in Columbus in that in that uh, group. And, and and our boy, our boy Sean Monahan, the, the fourth of the ones that are left, have scored a goal. He scored a uh, beautiful goal Wednesday Wednesday relief. night. Wednesday night, the season opener for the Montreal Canadiens. Sean Monahan scored a goal to briefly mm-hmm. give the Habs a lead. And, and it's all Toronto. Of, all of Flames Twitter was collectively happy for it. So yeah. we're all good just for, good want to see Sean Monahan succeed. And I think good we're all you. here. We all too. He did nothing wrong other than give his entire health to us. So, hey, the 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 only thing wrong with Sean Monahan is he he got hurt, and made too much money, and you know what? He deserved the money for how much he got hurt. Uh, True, yeah. So let's Sh- Shane. Let's talk about. So the the interesting thing is I I was looking over the schedule for the month, and uh, two things jumped out to me. I'm gonna be at every Flames game in person between now and the first game. I'm not at is the November 7th game on Long Island, uh, which I think, I think, I think that they might, I haven't heard one way or the other, but that'll be unofficially the 50th anniversary of the first, I think it's a month off of the 50th anniversary of the Flames and the Islanders, both playing their first NHL games. The first game between Atlanta and the New York Islanders was played in 19, in, in April or October, 1972. I think it was October 7th. And this is November 7th. So it's kind of cool, 50 years plus a month. 
So I, I, I think it'd be cool if the Islanders did something to commemorate it. I don't know if they will, but the Islanders tend to be really up on their own history and they, they go nuts with those kind of things. So hopefully they do something cool. But we'll the, cool, the we'll crazy see. thing is the Flames don't leave Alberta <laughs> until they get yeah. on a plane after that home game on uh, the uh, November 5th against New Jersey. So uh, we were talking, you know, we'll get into the schedule now. We were talking about the idea of, holy cow, they got to figure out, they got to get some mojo going with their lines, a lot of new guys to integrate. Well, they have one road game in the month of October, one road game between now and November 7th, and it's in Edmonton. <laughs> yeah. But they have three pretty tough games to, go, to start off. So, again, Thursday night, home opener, uh, the, fl- the first 5,000 legal adults in the building get a f- coupon for a free domestic beer which is such a cool promo the flames are doing it's like the idea is that like is hey awesome. show up early we'll get we'll get buy a beer that's hey, let's cool get rowdy let's get rowdy early and like that, promoting that i mean that's, you could go when, when you go to edmonton saturday you could get 55 dollar burger combo <laughs> burger pop combo if you really want I like, just like I just think the the flames buying everybody a beer, the first five thousand legal adults in the building giving you a coupon for a free beer. That's, that's awesome. awesome. That's just like it's it's sometimes you sometimes good promos don't need to be clever. The idea be like I just imagine probably in some meeting somebody who works in food for food and beverage was like, why don't we just give them free beer? And everyone's like, ha ha ha, good one, Bill. And then five seconds later, like, oh god damn it, that's a brilliant idea. Because like it's it's so easy. You don't need to go out and buy extra stuff. It's, it's already there. Like it's, it's also uh, going to get people in earlier. And once you're there, well, now you're going to spend more money on food before, yeah, and so merch our, our and two, all other stuff our too. Two, so. Our two bits of advice for people who have tickets to the game. One, go early because Stampede Park is a goddamn war zone right now. Don't uh, assume you know where you're driving down. Yeah, so either. give yourself extra time if you're cool with parking a little bit further away and, and walking in from uh, from like McLeod or Center Street or wherever. It's worth it because you'll avoid the the bottlenecks. Uh, getting in and out there around the casino, uh, around the south side of it, it's it's messy. So if you're just if you're if it's it's a Thursday night, if you're thinking. God, I just want to have a smooth in and out process from the facility. Your best bet is to go early, take transit, park far away. So build that into your schedule now. It's a 7.30 start, so there's a little bit of extra buffer time built in, but go early. Uh, two, again, if you're one of the first 5,000 people, you get a free beer. A free beer, and, as long as you get a coupon from the Flames, as long as you're an adult Since person. you mentioned transit, I experienced this firsthand when I was there. Uh, it's, Victoria Park Station is currently literally ripped apart. So when, if you're going to go leave the Dome, don't try to go to the Victoria Park Station. It's not existent right now. Yeah, Otherwise, you're going to so, a long walk. Yeah, do, do, do your research before you leave as to how you're going to get there and how you're going to get around because it's a bit messy. Uh, but yeah, so th- th- those are our two pieces of advice. No, before you go and try to get there early because 5,000 people get a free beer as long as you're a legal adult. My guess is if you look young and fresh faced like uh, Shane and I do, they'll ask you for ID. Don't take it personal. Uh, it's also the building's cashless now. So bring your debit card, bring your ID and bring uh, your lungs because it, it's uh, it's going to be a fun. It's going to be a fun game. I hope uh, it's a big test for the Flames. Uh, you know, Colorado played Wednesday night in, in, uh, in Colorado, uh, raised their stand like a banner. They're, you know, very minimalist design, stand like a banner. Then they're hopping on a plane after the game, flying to Calgary. They're probably not going to get into the city until two or three in the morning. They're probably not going to get a, get to sleep for a while. Uh, I don't think they're going to do a morning skate. So it'll be straight into it after the first game for Colorado. Wow. Uh, the flames, the flames will have a few days of, of prep and stuff. And I think it'll be, it's going to be a really interesting test for the flings because the the flames if if we're being completely honest your kids colorado is what the flames want to be when they grow up they're <laughs> they're fast they have they play with pace they they crush you with pace they crush you with physicality they crush you with talent they're they got goal, they got good goalies forwards they've got speed structure and talent structure. they yeah. just structure you and, and then just smother you with with waves of hockey players and structure and Kale McCarr is a cheat code. He's a literal yeah. cheat code. Yeah. And ev- yeah. finally, this year, everyone's giving him his McCarr, up with Matthews. And I, disclosure, 
I voted last year. I did not have Makar as my Norris winner. I had him second. I have Yossi Yossi. first. As soon as the results came out, I went, yeah, okay. I mean, there, there was like, it's basically, I think for a lot of people that vote was almost a coin flip and Makar was so friggin' good all year at at all times. Like he was, when he, he was, already when, broke someone's ankles tonight, Pike. It's on my it's on my Twitter feed, folks. If you if you go find it, it's in my tweet section. But he literally already broke someone's ankles. He did it, and he's gonna line and left him in the dust. There's another 81 games for him to do that to people. <laughs> yes. So, and that's the thing. Like Colorado, like they're they're a good team. They have a McKinnon. They have a McCarr. Uh, they don't have Darcy Camper anymore. They have Pavel Fran- Francouz. They Francouz. have Alexander Gorgiev. Oh, and Gorgiev and Francis are, From, their, are uh, the two goalies. And Francois, yeah. Yeah, so Francois. So I think I think they they got they got two good goalies. They don't need a great goalie. They've spent their money on you know. Landeskog, Randonen, and McCarr, McKinnon. Like they've spent their money where they think they should spend their money. But like everyone, they everyone see- and their dog thinks they're going to be an extremely strong contender to repeat this year they, they go to the shane school of team building uh, i always think that the team is and how they play defense is more important than the goalie to an extent you still need that bare minimum level of decent they, quality they, goaltender they, they, well, it's, I, I always but I they always, defend so well and they possess the puck so when, well when you're when you're so good with and away from the puck you mm-hmm. don't need to have goddamn Carey Price, Jacques no. Plant, uh, whoever, no. George Vezina. You don't need the ghost of George Vezina in your net, saving your ass if you play well enough in the rest of the rink. And if you needed a gold, yeah. if you needed a top tier goaltender win the Stanley Cup, then tell me why Anti Niemi has his name on the damn thing. So you're like not, you're not wrong. Like, like I'm not saying he's a bad goal. I, well, he, he was he, every he was, other place he, he went, was the, he was, he was no the red. right goalie. So he's, he's all they needed. He was what they needed under their system. So that, that's how all I need. view the goaltending. And that's why them like not paying Kemper uh, the massive raise and instead giving that money to Nathan McKinnon, making him the highest paid player in hockey in a year until, until Matthew signs in next a year. year. <laughs> and, then, um, and, but, but still you get the cup, you've got the accolades, you deserved it. And yeah. you know, Pike, I'm going to go and make a bold prediction that the flames will still lose their home opener uh, they haven't won since 2009, I think it is. Um, it's I, been a I while. Think, I think it's 12 in a row, 11 in a row. Yeah, row. It, I think it's, it's I, been I going on. It it's There's an the, old the losing from the, Mike. The season uh, opening when losing streak has been going on for so long that most of us don't remember how it started. And I just, with with all the new faces and all of the stuff needing to click properly, uh, and and the fact that it's the Avs that we're literally talking about the class of not only the West but the league. This real realistically, realistically, this is very much cart before the horse. But if you told me this was the Western Conference Final preview, I wouldn't I wouldn't laugh at you. I go, okay, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Sim- similarly, I, similarly, I think I'm the type of person that thinks you know if the Flames can manage to get past Edmonton this year in the playoffs, which we'll see. Uh, but if they can manage, if if they manage to get past Edmonton last year. It would have been Calgary, Colorado, the conference final, and that would have been amazing. And mm-hmm. so I, this is like, I think, I think you want to have those tests early and often. And look, if you look at the way the, the schedule is laid out, it, the Flames have the best team in hockey at home on the day after they play uh, their home opener. And so the Flames have it's it's a schedule win because you get a team. Who played the night before he traveled. To travel. But it's also Colorado. Yeah. And it's it's an NHL, it's a Flames team that hasn't really played a game together yet, really. And so yeah. I know it's gonna be interesting because I think both teams could be rusty or both teams could be it's gonna be a really interesting game. I think it's gonna be the, the one thing that's inherently positive about this year is the schedule is not condensed. There's a lot of practice time, there's a lot of time to work on things yeah. they didn't have the last two I think years so. with Daryl. And being i think they're gonna i think the last week i don't i haven't been at practice but i assume they've worked on their power play because there was no power in the power play all preseason they've been working on it. but if, and, if, you, if you look if you look at the if you look at the the first few days of the season colorado at home then uh i believe friday is gonna be a travel day uh, they might skate i don't know uh but they'll move they'll head on head on over to uh to edmonton they play in edmonton 8 p.m start uh late game hockey night in canada then Sunday's an off day. Monday's Mon- uh, Sunday and Monday are non-game days. 
usually after they travel they come home it's an off day but we'll see monday they probably practice then uh tuesday night vegas so your first your first what five days this season your first six days of the season you got three games you got three days you don't play but the three games you play are it's they're the class they're they're the top level of the conference all three of these teams i say i'd say I'd say all due I think Colorado is the best team until someone proves they're not. Edmonton, very, very good. I'd say the Flames should be motivated because you got to treat Edmonton like the class of the division until somebody knocks them off. And Vegas is a team who was very good on Tuesday in their opener against LA. Jack Eichel was flying and uh, they were well structured. Logan Thompson didn't look like he was out of his element. Yeah. And, and, they, and they, they've got a coach that everywhere he's been, He's taken them deep in the playoffs. That's Pete DeBoer now. Or uh, no, is it Bruce, Bruce Cassidy? Cassidy? It's Bruce Cassidy. Sorry, Bruce Pete Cassidy. DeBoer just left. Pete DeBoer left. But still, Bruce Cassidy still, I mean, there's some rumors about how the uh, Bruins don't like him, but those are rumors. I have none in that room. But I still think Vegas, they've got a elite I'll, I'll, defense. I'll tell you, with I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Every, every coach who's ever been fired from a, from, a, from a team, when he leaves town, most of the players don't like him. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you get to the point where you're fired, you've worn out your welcome with a few people. Every every player has – or every coach has a shelf life. Bruce Cassidy had his shelf life in Boston. They had some success, not the success they wanted. No. And he goes to Vegas where I think, you know, Vegas Vegas is interesting to me because, like, they, they've made some interesting bets. Some of their cap bets have gone terribly wrong. And, and now they're in a situation – they trade Batch Pacioretty and Dylan Coughlin for nothing. Well, they, the they traded Pacioretty and they had to include a great young defenseman in order to even do it. Yeah. Like, like to, to shed that salary. So Isn't that ridiculous? Wow. I still think Vegas is a playoff team in the Western, in the Pacific. I have no idea. I, 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 think my, I my gut says, my gut says to me, Calgary and Edmonton are very comfortable at playoff teams. I have no idea about the third spot, and I have no confidence in the Pacific to produce a wild card team. So I, I think it'll be I like out of it'll be it'll it'll be it'll be a mad dash for potentially one playoff spot in the Pacific. See, I got four teams of the Pacific I like, and six teams out of the Central. So that's ten teams vying for eight spots. So like that that's where my and and, la- and last year all five all two both wild card spots went to Central. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. Darryl, I think you got to operate on the assumption that you ain't getting a wild card spot unless uh, somebody's. You don't want a wild card spot because then you're going to just play whoever wins the central, which will either be the it'll uh, be Colorado, Atlanta, it'll be Colorado, Blues or Minnesota Wild. And as a lot of teams found out, including Edmonton, it's eight days wasted. So, <laughs> but I, I I think I think this this opening week is going to be really really instructive. It's going to be, I you know I I think I think the big challenge for the Flames is. How do they deal with uh, the expectations? And I'm, I'm really curious uh, Thursday and on Tuesday, how was the crowd? Because, you know, the, the, the Flames, they hadn't, you know, they had not, had not sold out any regular season games for various reasons. I wrote about the site. There's any number of reasons why coming out of a pandemic when the economy is not good, when the team hasn't been good until this year, uh, that people would be skeptical about spending their time and money there. But coming off a division title, coming off some success in the playoffs and a really, really fun playoffs, even though they didn't end the way that people wanted them to for the Flames. You know, the the red lot was jumping. I think a lot of people had a lot of positive experiences going to Flames games during the postseason. And even just being in the lot, being in bars, being at restaurants, being basically, you know, getting reconnected with the night life in Calgary is great. And when you have an excuse to enjoy, an extra excuse to not only enjoy it, but enjoy it with 50,000 of your closest Flames fan friends, yeah. it gets even a- better. Yeah, a- a- our, new, April- our new boy, uh, if, you, if, you, if you need hips on the bar scene, don't be afraid to go over and listen to Boomer and Pinder because I'm sure Pinder knows exactly which bars to hit on the fucking Red Mile there. So Hey, he's got children to take care of. He'll be doing it in a very small amount. But yeah, the, yeah I, I just think, I think I'm really curious if the opening night's a sellout. And even if it's not a sellout, how how is the crowd like? Is it going to be full? Is it going to be loud? Is it going to be excited? Or is it going to ex- is it going to have that kind of nervous energy that we've seen? Because there's been years in the past coming off of big seasons when the Flames weren't quite as good, and I think I think I think folks are a little bit cautiously optimistic. I think they want to have their their best uh, hopes for the team 
validated early in the season. Like say if the Flames get up to a good start early, I think it'll help people be a little bit more boisterous and a little bit more excited to come down to the building than maybe a 500 start would. I think for the home opener here, I think for Thursday night here, I think it's going to be bumping all the new faces, all of the hype, all off season. There's tons of people that want to get in and see these new players and see how they do. I think when they introduce them, I think uh, Uyghur, Kadri, and Huberto are going to get massive um, roars from the crowd, especially because they they committed their life to playing in Calgary. So, you know, Daryl always says, we, we, the fans of Calgary, value hard work and loyalty. Well, they've given us their loyalty. In order, uh, I, I just think especially the just the idea that, you know, seven years of Kadri. I mean, Kadri had, you know, years. yeah. Kad, Kadri has family in town, so Kadri kind of knows what Calgary is all about. But we like Uyghur's uh, an Ottawa kid, uh, young uh, young master Huberdo is from uh, just outside of Montreal. Uh, so I mean, those guys like they're not really. I don't think they have the ties to Calgary that uh, that Kadri might. So that's what to me. That's why it's kind of impressive that they locked themselves in for uh, you know nine years. So yeah. I, I mean, I, I did mention, I think on one of our earlier podcasts that it was a good time for Huberto to cash in because what if he doesn't go? What if he only gets 70 points in 82 games or something with Calgary? That's not to say that if that happens, that doesn't mean Calgary's not a playoff team. It's just you're on a new team. You're not familiar. You're not familiar with the power play. Could take a jump. It was just better for him to cash in when he did. Like, He's, How yeah. often do you repeat 115-point seasons in the NHL? Almost never. So, but what if he does? Well, I think, I think, well, if he does, then he, he only, he, he, ten and a half million, he probably only uh, lost about half a million years. So he, uh, he cashed in pretty good. And, and you know what, it, it's, it's good for Calgary. I think their power play is going to be a different dynamic this year. Once they figure it out, him finding those passing lanes, I think players uh, as they grow, like Manjapani and Dubé are going to, are going to, as they grow with this team in the future, are going to find a lot more scoring opportunities and especially around the net. So I'm interested in seeing how they play defensively uh, on the four check, but they've got three, they've got maybe one of the best three up the middle uh, on paper in the entire league balance wise. And that, that, and then if you get through that, you've got to go through not only one of the best decors that was first, I think they were first in goals against per game last year. Second was Vancouver uh, 2.07 goals per game. Uh, is what Calgary allowed the least amount in the entire league. And uh, they were the third. They were third. The West. I think it was the West. Cause I think Carolina had less goals against Carolina them. and the Rangers had less. Yes. Yeah, sure. Sturkin. Uh, <laughs> but, but that defense got better. That defense didn't get worse. That defense got better. So in essence, it's going to be tough for teams to score. I think we're going to see a lot more low scoring games to start the season. Uh, and, and I, I think so. the, the offense will start to come as guys get more familiar with each other. Okay. And we so lay here's, things out properly. Here, here's the, the first stretch of the season. And I'll, I'll list off the, the teams the Flames are playing and the order they're playing in. And then when I'm done, tell me what you think of the schedule. Uh, Colorado, defending Stanley Cup champions. Edmonton played in the conference final. Vegas, non playoff. Buffalo, non playoff. Carolina, playoffs. Pittsburgh, playoffs. Edmonton already talked about them, but they went to the final four. Uh, Seattle non-playoff, Nashville playoff, New Jersey non-playoff. That's the the home stretch they have, uh, excluding that one Edmonton game in Edmonton. But they have it's it's an interesting game. It's interesting because it seems it seems pretty front loaded. Vegas, while they're a non-playoff team, no one I don't think anyone's going to you know write them off this year. Uh, the other teams they got, I mean, Buffalo is Buffalo. We always you know they're I'm going to assume Buffalo Buffaloes until they stop. Uh, eventually they're going to, eventually they're going to get good. Cause they're, they were accumulating a lot of good young players, but they just yeah. haven't gelled yet. Carolina disclosure in our, in our, uh, in a round table that uh, goes live on the side of Thursday morning. I say Carolina wins the Stanley cup. They're very, very good. Uh, I think I people Carolina are sleeping for, on them. I picked Carolina to the conference final two years in a row and they've keep letting me down. So I, I think there's, I think they're sleeping. I think people are sleeping in Carolina. I, it's, I think Pittsburgh people are underestimating a, the acquisition of Brent Burns, yeah. what it's going to do. But, Carolina. but uh, if you look at the, the, the early teams, the flames play a Colorado team that just won the Stanley cup, Carolina a team that people think can win the Stanley cup, Pittsburgh, ditto Edmonton, no slouch. I think if they, if they put it all together somehow, 
uh, went on a run. They've definitely got the higher end talent for it. So I think, you know, it's, it's a front loaded schedule, but I think it's the type of schedule where what's the old saying iron sharpens iron. And if the flames are going to be as good as people think they can be, they're going to need to get good quickly because you're not playing these teams and beating these teams they're playing without getting good. In the month of October, the only easy game is, is against the Sabres. That's it. Like you're playing, you're playing the Oilers, Carolina, Pittsburgh, Vegas, and Colorado. None of those teams should give you an easy test. And you know what? It's good for Calgary. It's going to get them out of the gates. It's going to force them to be on their toes early. And when eventually they do start playing teams that are maybe a little lesser in the standings, they're, they're going to just be ready to thwomp them in, in theory. Right. Um, I'd love to see, especially in the first five games, I'd love to see at least two wins. Like I said, I'm not expecting a hot start out of Calgary. There are a lot of new pieces. There's no guarantee all of them fit together right away. Uh, preseason, like I said, I watched that top line wasn't perfect together. They didn't have any heavy possession shifts. Uh, so I'm, I'm just expecting a slower start. If they get out to 5-0, and oh, I, I'm thrilled. To, uh, I'm happy as hell. A, uh, a playoff pace, a 100-point pace, it's about three out of five, three wins out of five games. Mm-hmm. Six take get six points out of every ten possible points. So yes. I think that's I think they're the coach is sort of looking at you got to get in, and I think his motivation will be you got to make sure you sort of maintain or or stay ahead of that playoff pace because it's one of those things that once you're behind, it's really really difficult to catch up, especially in this division where I mean Edmonton's Whoa. good. LA good, uh, Vancouver good, Vegas good. I think uh, Anaheim to be a tough out for a lot of teams with all the young talent they have. I don't know what to make of San Jose, to be honest with you. But they're well, gonna they're not be... gonna play William Acklin. They didn't even play him. Yeah. Like like he's he's an unreal talent. And they didn't even. He's going to the Barracuda, didn't he? I, well, that wouldn't be a bad thing for him to do either. But... But and then um, Seattle, there's no way Seattle's as bad as they were last year. So, I mean, it, it, just I th- statistically, I, their goaltender should randomly get in front of a few more pucks. Their goaltending <laughs> was the main reason they were so bad last year. And there's no way yeah. they should be that bad. I, I think goaltending and an utter lack of continuity. Well, and they, they do, they take a lot of point shots. Like they, they don't emphasize getting in the net. They got two guys that are really good at doing that in Bjorkstrand and Borkowski this off season. So I expect them to be a little more offensive and Matty Beneers is a very good player. And that is a very good center. They're still going to be growing as a team. I think Calgary is going to take a lot of these younger players especially early in the season and take advantage of them. They're very structured. They've always a very structured team with Daryl at the helm and their attack is relentless, especially on the four check. Uh, like when they play Buffalo next week, I really think they're going to give those young defensemen just fits with the puck. Um, last well, year though, they couldn't score on them. So well, they couldn't what, score. What, what, uh, what do you want to see out of the, like for you, what's a, the first week, like the first three games of the season? Uh, I want to see, I want to see, I'd like to see two wins. I'd like to see two wins. You're, uh, if so I you're, you're one, using the, you're using the meatloaf, uh, the meatloaf road to success. Two out of three ain't bad. Two out of three ain't bad. Yeah. I mean, I, th- I think that's what one, they got to. They, 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 it's the Stanley cup champs. Uh, I'll, we'll see who starts in Edmonton on Saturday. Is Markstrom going to try and counteract his demons of the playoff past? Or do you give Ladar the second start and then run Markstrom at home the next week? And then they've always they, they had do the, historically historically the the backup role whether it's David Riddick or as Dan Vladar when they've had success they just run them on the road shit ton of road starts yep and so I mean, it, it makes sense if before, that's the only yeah. road game you get till the weekend in November and Dan Vladar had a hell of a training camp yeah I I'm just saying and and. You know, but but if Markstrom goes to the coaching staff and says, "I want this start," you don't say no. If he wants to challenge, you know, you, if anyone who knows anything about Jacob Markstrom knows that if he could, he'd start eighty-two. Yeah, but there's going to be a few games that he has circled, and Edmonton would probably be one of those games they've circled. So I think that's the big. I think that's the thing to to bear in so mind too. Maybe maybe that's the only real drama from this week. I'm really excited to see Dylan Dubé get his opportunity. He's he earned it. He had a great training camp him and Caudry clicked naturally right off the start. 
uh, if he can turn into a top six level producer, as, as, as a huge bonus. The thing I'm looking forward to is a few specific players getting their first taste of the Battle of Perda. One of them is Nazem Kadri because I think oh. Nazem Kadri, he seems like a guy who's been built, who's been waiting his whole life to wear a Flames jersey and play Edmonton because, like, he just he feels like maybe it's just he, you know Nazem Kadri's an interesting interesting guy uh, in a lot of different ways. But I think the he feels like he's been a flame for a while. Like it, it doesn't feel like he just signed, you know, like two months ago. He feels like Lasty is gonna look good on him, man. It just when they wear that jersey, they just seem a little more fierce. Like they just seem a little more in your face. And it just it's gonna be a great fit for for him, not only being as rowdy as he is, but it's high level of skill. He can back up, he, he can trash talk, and then he can back it up on the ice. He had 87 points last year, and he only played 77 games. So he's he, not only is he legit, he's he's, he's, he's going to get every he, chance to beat that total. He's got the same attitude. The Manja, uh, there's two guys that I always point out is Manjapani and Anderson. Those two, when they play in the Battle of Alberta, are the most entertaining in my eyes because they're always just causing shit and t- stirring the pot. And I think Caudry's just going to add to it. And then if anyone tries to touch any of them, 17, you, you, you have to answer to him. So, or, or, and if he's not on the ice, oh, we've got a, we've got a big Z on the back. So, you know, it's, it's fun. It's fierce. Uh, the Oilers will have an emergency recall for the weekend because they're playing short right now. We'll see. We'll, who that see. Is. But, we'll uh, see. We'll see who it is. So no, they, the, their injured guys might be back in time for the weekend. Yeah, it's full. They're only, they're, yeah, they're, full. For, for those of you wondering, the Oilers played shorthanded on Tuesday night, or on Wednesday night, rather, uh, because uh, they had, uh, I believe it was Kyler Yamamoto and, and Warren Fogle were both uh, dealing with minor injuries. Neither of them could have gone, so they ended up playing a skater short. Uh, if one of them is available for the weekend games, then they don't get an emergency recall, but because they played a man short, they're eligible for uh, a cap free emergency recall. If they have to, if they don't have enough bodies to field a regular yeah. roster, so yeah. I I don't think they'll need to. But it's an interesting wrinkle. I'm I'm just I'm just excited. For, you know, we've been talking about you know the historic teardown of the division winning Flames and then the Lazarus like resurrection of the decayed husk of the Calgary Flames. It's been a very eventful, weird off season, and so now it's bad, like baby. you know. Brad True Living somehow cobbled, t- turned this into Frankenstein's monster and got a lightning rod and lightning struck it. And then the, the, the monster gets up and starts lurching forward again. And now we get to see what the monster gets to do. Is it going to, you know, ravage the townsfolk or is it just going to stumble around and sort of make noises? It's, you know, I, I think it, yeah. you, don't, you don't know how like, there's, this is a fascinating experiment with putting guys, a bunch of new guys in very prominent positions into a team and seeing how quickly they can gel and mm-hmm. it look it, they're making progress during the preseason but until it's, the regular season it doesn't matter i still think like i if it, if it comes out it works great i just like i said i'm cold water on the immediate fire things don't always like if you get one player maybe he fits right away the flames got four and it's not just on the top end kevin rooney has to sim- simultaneously Fit they're they're the they're, they're going to well. have players playing so. in every game situation, power play, five on five, and the PK who have never worn a flame jersey before. Yep. So and that's fa- that's optimistic. fascinating to me. Like, cautiously if, optimistic. If if it's a slow start, I'm not going to roast them because because of all the changes, they've got to have time to mesh. And there's it, it, it sucks when you're behind to start like four or five games in, but they're more than capable. That happened yeah. last year. I they won five in a row. I, on the road. And never. Look I back. would. I would advise that the first week, go with the lumps as they come along. Mm. By the second, third week, that's when, uh, that's when the panic button, yeah, if it needs to be hit. Don't be like Leafs being. fans. One game in, uh, already eviscerating Justin Hall and Jake Muzzin. Like, like give give it some time, folks. No, no. This is you know it's you know the the fun thing about covering a Canadian team is that when they win a couple games in a row, you start playing the parade. When they lose a couple games in a row, you start digging the grave. Uh, and there's Darn sweepstakes. Yeah. There's, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no middle ground, but that's the fun part of it. Uh, so folks, if you're, uh, if you're new to the site, welcome. We've had uh, a lot of new faces come in uh, partially due to some of our off season acquisitions. Uh, welcome. We're, we're excited to have you along. 
Uh, we try to make the podcast uh, interactive as much as we can. So if you have any questions, comments, whatever you want us to talk about, uh, tweet at Flames Nation or at Flash underscore 33 or at Ryan and Pike. Uh, please, 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 if you get a chance, uh, subscribe to uh, this podcast wherever you get your podcast. Uh, Apple, Spotify, uh Amazon, wherever, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, also, it. make sure you make sure you subscribe to uh, the Nation Network YouTube page. Just go to, just search Nation Network on your YouTube. Uh, click that little subscribe button, and here's the secret. So you'll get, you'll get if you subscribe, you'll get all of the, you get notified when any of our content is put up. Uh, we have content, daily content from Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, Toronto, Winnipeg. I think Winnipeg, definitely. No, not Winnipeg. Everywhere but Winnipeg. Uh, and and we're always working the like the, the guys yeah, you know, up north are always working to get even more content for you. So guys. yeah, so we have uh I'm gonna forget the name, so I apologize. We have uh Leafs, Leafs Morning, morning Leaks Leafs Morning Take, yeah, uh with, with Albert, uh, Nick Albert Nick Alberja and Jay Rose Hill. Uh yeah. that's that's from Toronto from the Leafs Nation. We have Oilers Nation every day with Tyler Yramshuk coming out of Edmonton. We yeah. have uh Barn Burner with uh Rhett Pinder and uh What's his name? Boomer. I always, I love Boomer. Uh, So that's every day, uh, 1030 Mountain uh, to noon, live on our YouTube page and then archived afterwards. And out of Vancouver, connects conversation with Faber and Quads. Uh, Every day we got stuff. And of course, we'd be remiss if we did not give a tip of the hat to our fearless leaders up uh, at DFO. Uh, We have both the DFO rundown uh, with uh, Jason Greger and Frank Cervalli and uh, daily face off live every weekday with uh we usually usually it's, hosts right it's usually uh your M. Chuck and a cast of yeah. characters almost always frank and uh mckenna mckenna goes Matt Larkin, a, lot, a whole Alberta bunch of jobs over for the fantasy side it's it's There's, daily face off lives and all-encompassing league-wide listen so if you want to get more folk like like the other ones we mentioned are all focused on markets that's one where you can jump out and enjoy yeah. a league wide. So if you if you subscribe to our YouTube page, uh, you'll get pinged whenever anything good comes up, and most if not all of it is good or aspiring to be good. The other thing, the other thing is if uh, if you go to playlists after you subscribe, go to playlists, find Flames Nation, and bookmark that, and then you'll only you'll be able to focus just on the flame stuff we have the shot down of flames podcast we have flames nation live with pat steinberg we have flames nation radio with shane and myself we of course have the aforementioned barn burner with boomer pinder and Rhett. so we have a bunch of stuff uh we're gonna have it all season we're gonna hopefully uh, add some more stuff as we move along throughout the season uh but if there's anything you want to see if you're everything you're you you want to give us polite feedback on uh please reach out to us via socials we're we're really excited for the season it's going to be a really really fun season uh it feels like we're already like a thousand years into it and we're day two of the of the season so it's going to be once the thing, things get going it's going to go fast and furious so we're really excited to have everyone along for the ride uh next this, time we're gonna have games to talk about we'll have games, games to break nice. down uh we're pretty excited about that. So uh, once again, we're delivered to you by DoorDash. Ding dong. It's DoorDash. Uh, they'll bring you food. And Eau Claire Distillery, the makers of Rupert's Whiskey, the official whiskey of Calgary Flames. Make sure you stock up before the season gets going because uh, it'll be, it'll friggin' be the all-star break before you know it. We'll be 40 some games into here and we'll I'm be just, wondering where the time went. I'm just wondering what day I wake up, walk outside and there'll be white stuff on the ground at this point. So it's, it's a, I like it. It's my favorite season. So it's fine. <laughs> it's sweater weather kids. And uh, t- uh, Thursday, it'll be hockey sweater weather. Boom. Yes. That's a transition uh, your, for sure. Radio is search, serving you well, Pike. I, I got to say I'm getting my reps in for Shane. I'm Ryan. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you guys in a week. This has been flames nation radio.